You may be going through some opposition, but you have the power of the blood. You have the power of the word of worship and praying in tongues. And you might think, oh, here she goes being all, you know, you might think I'm acting religious. No, when that, that's what we do, right? I mean, when we're going through these hard times, this is all what we all have to do. And then we talk to one another and we process our stuff to get the hell out of us. <laughs> Some, some have more than others. <laughs> and it says here, and, and he said, all right, I'm going to read it again. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the, God, the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. The Amorites were... Uh, the mountain people, tall, they were impressive, and uh, they were real proud, and self-exaltation self represented the Amorites. How many of things, you have to just quiet your heart right now and say, Lord, where have I not obeyed you? Where have I not obeyed you? Even like in going to visit someone, even where, you know, going to minister to somebody, or even forgiving someone in your family that you want to slap, <laughs> you know? Maybe, maybe there's someone there. That you, that you haven't really allowed the Lord to bring healing to your heart. And so we have to really ask the Lord, where have I not obeyed your voice? Because you, let me tell you something, you'll get stuck there. Fear of man. How about giving? Sometimes we're afraid. We don't want to do that. Or how hard is it when you've been really hurt and you feel like you've been betrayed? To, to choose to forgive him. It doesn't mean you have to invite him over for dinner, but, but, but at least you ask the Lord to heal your heart, and Lord, I choose to bless them. I didn't want to bless the person that hurt me. It wasn't Peter, but <laughs> I would have just choked him. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, I mean, how many, uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's easier said than done. You know, like when we're all good and we're in church and we're praising the Lord, it's easier said than done until that, that situation happens, right? But the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I will be there to help you. I will be there to help you get through this, and you need me to forgive. All right? So in Judges eleven sixteen, it says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak tree at Oprah, not Oprah Winfrey, at Oprah, which belonged to Joash, and his son Gideon was beating wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. See, he was operating in fear. He was operating in the fear of man with this woke mentality nonsense that's out there and this cancel culture. Oh, I'm afraid. I don't want to offend anybody. They're offending us left and right. But we have to, like, walk around on eggshells? I don't think so. Now, we, we speak the truth in love, but we speak the truth. And it says here... And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty man of fearless courage. Don't you love that? The Lord didn't say to him, What's wrong with you? How come you're hiding over there? My God, what is your problem? Don't you have faith in me? And you know, maybe that's some, some of us might say that, you know. But, but, and so the Lord says, you are a mighty man of God. See, that's what the prophetic does. The prophetic speaks into your person, into your destiny, right? And then it says here in verse 13, and Gideon said, oh, sir. No, he didn't. He said, oh, yeah. Well, Lord, if you were with us, why did all this stuff happen to us, right? Why? And so how many of us have said, oh, God, Why? Why is this happening to me? He said, and where are all your wondrous works of which our father told us about? Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken in us and given us into the hand of the Midianites. See, he's not understanding that God is saying, listen, I have a plan and a purpose for you, and you're focused on what you didn't see happen because you're operating in fear. And the Lord ignored him. He didn't even, he didn't even come. He just... The spirit of slap. Just come over here, Gideon. Let me slap you. And it, and it says here, And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of Midian. I, have I not sent you? And that's what God is saying to you tonight. Where are you stuck? Are you hiding out with the wine press in the caves? Or are you hiding out? The Lord is saying to you, You are a mighty man or woman of courage and of power and of might. And saying, Don't you dare settle and listen to the whispers and the lies of the enemy that's trying to keep you back you know we can we play it real well in church we can come in oh praise the lord everything's great and meanwhile we are falling apart inside and the lord is saying just be honest about where you're at just allow me to heal you 
It's, it's, not, it's not shameful. It's just, listen, I'm having a hard time. I, I, I'm really struggling, and I don't know how to get out of this mess. Or this situation seems to be so overwhelming. That's where we all need each other to come around and help each other, right? And so the Lord turned to him and said, You go in that might, and you will save Israel. And that word might is K-O-A-C-H, and it means strength. You go in the power of God and the strength of angels. That's what it means. So Gideon said to him, Oh, Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Listen to this, Turkey. Behold, my clan is poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Now, I'm saying, look at that turkey, because I used to be the one that would say, oh, my God, Lord. You know, you, you look at your inadequacies. He said, I am the poorest in Manasseh, and that word means weak, thin. Hallelujah, if you're thin. Hallelujah. <laughs> one who is low, hang down, distressed, weakly, weakened eyes. See, you have no, no, no eyesight to see, to discern. You're not a seer, to slacken, to oppress. That's what it's saying. That's what he's saying. That's who I am, God. I'm weak. I'm hanged. I'm, you know, I'm walking down like this. I have no hope. And then weakest means there, to, he was insignificant. Listen to this. Little, dried up, empty, oppressed, small, low, impoverished. See, God is dealing with our identity. He's saying, listen. You have to love yourself because if you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. You have the DNA. I have the DNA of Christ Jesus in us. It doesn't mean we don't get scared. It doesn't mean we don't get discouraged at times, but it means I have the mighty one living in me. The Bible says I have the mind of Christ. See, we have, to, we have to confess that. We have to speak that over ourselves over and over again. We're made in Christ's image. And God is saying, no, you're not. When you say, it's like when the, um, in the book of Numbers, when they went to check out the, the promised land, they came back and says, oh, man, you know, the fruit and everything was just amazing out there. But, you know, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. Oh, come on. The Lord, you know, was so aggravated with them, saying, you are not, you're not grasshoppers. But let me ask you. Do you see yourself as least of or, you know, insignificant, lowly, weak, thin? Hallelujah if you say that then. But, but do you see yourself, you know, that way? <laughs> no, no, thin, thin. Anyway, um, so, I mean, do you see yourself oppressed or impoverished? So we have to check our hearts. You know, how many times, like even, all right, let's say something in church, all right, like when we were doing the School of the Prophets, how many people got really afraid when they said to do um, one of the prophetic acts to go minister to somebody or give them a prophetic word, right, or an activation? And they're like, I'm, I can't do that. I can't. I'm not going to do it. You know, I was telling them a story earlier. One of the first times I was, uh, I was with these group of prophets many, many years ago, and uh, I was uh, assigned to this major prophet who, when he would prophesy, I would prophesy like 11 pages, you know? And I'm like, oh, God, give me one word. That's all I want is a word. And then so I'm standing there. I was panicking, and I just said, oh, God, please let me get sick to my stomach. Please, dear God. I'm praying that I would be sick to my stomach and have the runs. And, and then, you know, and I'm like, God, please, I can't. I can't. I, I just don't hear from you. I, you know how we get. And then what happened was I had a word for the lady. And then I'm like, oh, God, don't answer that prayer. Please don't get me sick, you know. But, I mean, we get so silly. We get so silly. And, and, but the Lord is saying, don't allow that fear to hold you back. Fear was holding Gideon back. He said, you are a mighty man of valor. Yes. 